Well, hello there, boys and girls. It's Wayne Robson again. Right. And for those of you who do not like my accent, tough. Right. I'm going to try and slow down a bit again as I'm using like a combination of programs here and my microphone is in a bad place. It means it may fade in and out and get a bit echoey occasionally. I'll do my best though, right? Um, this is an idea I covered in a... Uh, I was recently doing a, um, a series of five days of lecturing at uh, Herefordshire University and this was something I covered for the first time. I've been doing this sort of stuff for years um, outside of production on my ad. Um... And I thought, it's well, it's that useful that maybe some people don't, haven't worked this out yet, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to um, create a sort of terrain, or a section of terrain in this case, because it's easier and more visible than doing, say, a whole landmass, which would take a while. Um, and it would all be very fine details, you know, and it'd be tiny, tiny little amounts. Uh, and not doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it's easier to show you uh, in this case, something bigger, right? So what I'm going to use is a combination of mud box and this nice little template of mine from World Machine, right? You have to excuse me, I'm on having the finishing cigarette. You know what's the best bit about like doing stuff from home, right? I can have a coffee, I can have a cigarette, I can do what I like. But yeah, so this is basically using the default template I started off, right? So let me explain what this does. We start off with a radial gradient, right? Type Gaussian. Now, then it goes into an advanced Perlin, right? So if I do that there, you see radial gradient, which feeds in here to the mask input of the advanced Perlin. Then we've got all this stuff, and we can have it as mountains or whatever we want, right? We can change all this stuff, uh, change the persistence if we wanted to, like that. We change how many octaves it has, you know, maybe change it back a bit, you know, maybe have it simpler. But in this case, we'll, we'll try it something like that, a bit simpler. Um, that then feeds into an erosion, right? So we can have a, how far we want it to erode, right? How much sedimentary carry is there? We don't want that much because it might not look as nice. Filter strength and all that, you know, you can randomize the shit out of it. Now, once we've got that sorted out, right, I will simply to an output, height field output, which is along on the uh, output side, you know, up here. and I basically tell it where to go, okay, so in this case, uh, I'm going to have to pause it while I find the folder and then put it with a right, now I know where it's at, but let's change things around here, so there we go, I put it in here, and in that case, I'm picking a 16-bit raw data thing there, which not really a good idea usually, because um, that was for when I was doing some Unity stuff. If you want to get stuff into Unity, that's how you do it. Um, and I will take this out as, well. let's see, 16-bit TIFF, right? Sort of there. Put it in here. What are my other ones, TIFFs? No bloody idea. But anyway, I'm going to put that in there, and I'm going to call that uh, 6 underscore VDM, right? It's not really a VDM, but it bloody do for the moment. Then, um, I won't output at the moment, because I have to build it, so I would build it like that, Bosch. That's what it looks like in 3D, right? So we've got all that data there. If I wanted to, I could uh, change the world extents and stuff, and the resolution, so it have it to say 2048, and then build it again. It'll take a little bit longer. Um, higher your resolution, the longer it takes. A bit like a lot of things. Bigger things take more time. Stop the sniggering at the back. We're not five-year-olds. Oh, go on, snigger as much as you bloody like, I don't care. Right, so this is taking its sweet time. That's one of the worst things about World Machine, is it takes its time. And some things like erosion, you know what, it takes a while. So I'm going to pause this while it does its shit, so you're not bored out your mind. Right, it's done. Okay, so there you go. There's our lovely, beautiful terrain there, right? You can do all sorts of clever stuff with World Machine if you really want to, right? That's up to you. I'm keeping you a simple solution. Personally, if I had the time, I'd go into this, I'd sculpt some cliffs and stuff along here, make them nice and pretty, you know, stuff like that. It's good for concepting and shit, right? So, I go back to my thingy bob and I go right out put the disc. And it goes, yay, there it is, lovely. Right, now, I don't need that anymore. Bye-bye. No, don't want to do that shit. It takes up a lot of space. 
So what I've done here is I've taken the default plane mud box and then basically uh, went to mesh and rebuilt the subdivision levels, right? Sometimes you've got to delete the levels, all the previous levels to do it. So I've done that twice just to create something that uh, is a bit lower. Now I will, you can hear me doing that hopefully. In this case, I'm not going to go above, um, let's see, 1.6 mil, right? Not a lot of point in this case. It's only for concepting shit out. Now I have in here a series of uh, vector displacement stamps. Uh, this one isn't a vector displacement stamp. This is just a normal one, all right? So I've got all this shit here. And I can go uh, under here and we will say, da, 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 da. in fact, let's start with this one, all right? I'll make it as a doohickey, all right? And of course, because I've named it wrong, it's going to create all sorts of merry hell. So what I'll have to do with this is go into my other thing over here and take BDM off it, because I forgot about that. So it's been a while. Right, there you go. So there's no six BDM thing there, so it's deciding that it's going to be an ass. There you go. Right, lovely. Hey, right. So there we have it. I'll press Q to bring this up when it decides to bloody work, because my machine is being a bit of an arse today. Right, so hopefully you can see that there. All right. Now I'm going to put a mountain. Uh, let's see, we'll use, use a formula brush again. Right, I'll just see how powerful it is. That's made it there. It's gone a bit inward, so I need something a little bit more powerful than that. Let's put it up like this. Make sure I have a layer on it. Layers are handy. And we'll just put something over here and we'll just make this a nice fucking mountain. Yo, hello, mountain. There you go. Fun, fucking fantastic. Right. I really should be using my Wacom. That's the reason why I bloody got it after all. Although it always seems to pick the wrong monitor. And I will change it. Now, at the moment, um, we have a few little doohickeys on the edges which we're going to want to get rid of. Right? Because if you don't... Now, imagine if you're if you are, you're doing this for a game um, and you had a normal size blokey, right? Those would be the size of a house. And you really don't want a guy walking along and suddenly coming up against this big jiggy jaggy wall. All right, so be careful with it. Now, um, I can also, if I take my imprint here, take one of these bit displacement ones here, like that one, and I will take it as a stamp there, and we'll just put it in here, which I'm going to have to. Oh, of course, it had done it in the wrong bloody brush. Of course, it did, because it's being an ass. Right, go in there now. Go in there, lovely, fun, bloody tastic. Right, so we can see where we're at here. We'll make another one. Yep, not very, very much, is it? So let's put it like that. Build another one up. Now we can take this, and that one is shouldn't be like that. It should be more like that. If it decides it's going to undo shit, which, oh, that's better. Right, so I've got that there, all right? We can take that along here. It's a bit big, that, isn't it? So we need to turn it down. Um, you see why I normally prefer to use um, in the stencils. Now I could take this and press it to invert it, right? And make a trench along here, right? Like that. So we've got a bit of a trench going on. We then had a few of these little ones along the side to show them a little bit. But to be honest, what we'll do is we'll keep to uh, just use one stamp at the moment. You really don't want to be using one stamp. Trust me on this, right? Not a good idea. So if we make him active again, and I'll find out where the smeg and is at, because it is rather small um, tolerances. We take our big doings again. We make a bit of stuff there. Put them down here, make them smaller. Maybe press inwards on this one, give it a bit of a difference. Make it a whole lot bigger, do it all over, add a bit of random all over the place. And I apologise for the fact that you probably can't make me out very well. Take it along here, we'll do them. We'll take them round a bit, which I know is not entirely visible right now. Make maybe a few little ones down here. We'll take the shit out of that, put it across here. Da -dum -dum -dum, da -da 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 -bum -bum. Make another little peek up here. This is way too flat. Let's have another mountain. Let's have a big one. All right, so you've got another big mountain there. 
we'll put a one at the back and make it really a whole shitload bigger because we're going to assume that's the end of our world over here turn it around a bit bit bigger do it so like that down here make that like this so we've got nice edges on it and we could even get really clever if we wanted to and use it to create overhangs like this right so once you've got all this stuff going on you can spend as long as you bloody like on it i'm being quite honest with you. you can spend up from now till doomsday doing this shit, right and once you've got it um and done a few widdly bits right you can go in like we you know did on um the video with sort of the the ocean and um make it a little bit uh more interesting okay now at the moment we've got plenty of little thingies on here now my one thing feeling about world machine is uh, it looks pretty nice if i reset my bloody camera all right um from the ground but it what it doesn't look good at um he says trying to get this balanced right and I got a material that will work. No, of course I haven't. I just reset the whole bloody machine recently. Excuse me a second while I just quickly sort my shite out. Right, take that up there and bosh. Then we'll just quickly add a bit of lighting to it. Is it looks great from the ground, right? You've got all these nice overhanging cliffs, you can sculpt the shit out of it, right? Bring in it to ZBrush if you want, because I know some of you are a lot more comfortable with that. Doesn't really matter to me which one I use. Then um, you go above and you see everything is all crissy crossy and stuff, right? So what I like to do um, is I just quickly find where my thing is at the moment. See how how well it's uh right, that should be a better. I'm normally going with a bit of a sharper fall off and just accentuate some of these. Bit like the same as the Houdini stuff, right? That you know, when I was taking that ocean plane and stuff like that, and you know, you can do this until the bloody cows come on, right? You can just separate some of these to make them a bit more blocky, and you know, it helps. It's put a bit of you into it, right? It's all about what you what you want. If it's a personal project, right? If it's not a personal project, then you know what. You do as you're bloody told, the same as everybody else on the planet, and you live with it. So, you you know, yeah, you just go around and do all sorts of crazy stuff, and, you know, you can use any stencils that you've got, you know, stuff like that, and go in and break it up, add little caves, you know, little houses, whatever the bloody hell turns you on and floats your boat. So there you go, that's like a very simple way of uh, concepting terrain. Now, if I was being uh, rather... Uh, clever there. What I would also do is put a uh, image base light on, all right, which at the moment looks like that. I would then open this up, find my textures, go in here, find a one like that sort of daylight will do. All right, put a daylight one there. I'll just quickly rotate that around so it's blue, all right? Turn it down a fair whack. It's a bit too blue for my purposes at the moment, all right. Like that. Put this here. I'll back that up to 1.2. It looks a bit nicer. Right. Take that off. Put a tone mapper on. Take adaptation to zero. Put this bugger back on. Bosh. Have a look at our light. See what it looks like. That's all very contrasty and stuff. There you go. Yeah. Simple way of concepting some terrain. You can, of course, then take this back out. Make yourself a displacement map, right? Make it in whatever size you bloody want, right? But make it as a 16-bit map, right? Uh, and then bring it back into World Machine and have more erosion on the whole thing after you've sculpted it. That means everything fit back together and doesn't make your sculpted sections stick out like a sore thumb. So yeah, I hope that's been useful to somebody. I think it's a pretty groovy way to do it. And if you've kicked about the world machine, you can, you know, the script's out there. I think there's one on uh, Polycount 
that a guy made that basically add all the nice colours and stuff to your terrain and stuff like that. But that's a whole different kettle of fish. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.